Hello and welcome to Black Dragon Tarot. Thank you so much for joining me for today's Timeless Pick a Card reading, which is a collaboration between myself and Damselflies. And I'm very excited to be doing this collaboration with my good friend who came up with this idea um, in incorporating both the Black Moon Lilith and the White Moon Selena. So I'll be covering in this reading White Moon Selena, mostly your good karma, I say good, um, but where what lessons you might have um, overcome in a past life where you have kind of um, blessings in this lifetime and we'll be looking at some of those energies and how you could make the most out of this good karma that you have and then um, damselflies from is going to be looking at the black moon lilith more of maybe low vibrational karma but also the hidden wisdom that comes with that and so i have no doubt you'll enjoy both of the readings but definitely while you're there subscribe to damsel fries she's amazing so i have three piles um for you to choose from i stacked a bunch of oracles so this is going to be a lot of oracles in this reading <laughs> um kind of looking at again past energies so um, where the blessings are coming from, what you've conquered in past lives. But let's go ahead and take a look. We have three piles and pile one. And yes, I know it says black moon. <laughs> pile two. And then pile three. And of course, I'll have these in the description if you need some more time to look at each pile, meditate, take your time, as much as you need, that's going to be in the description again. But yeah, I'll see you at your reading. Hi Pile 1, if you chose this card, this is going to be your reading on um, your good karma from past life with White Moon Selena. So we'll be looking at the energies from past lives that are influencing you in a positive way in this lifetime. And if you missed the intro, this is a collaboration between myself and Damselflies, and she'll be looking at the Black Moon Lilith. So uh, definitely, <laughs> you'll, you'll get it. I, I have the cards here. Uh, that's why I'm smiling, but she's wonderful. Please uh, check out her reading and subscribe while you're there. And this was her idea, which I think was, again, marvelous. Um, I'm just smiling because the Oracle cards that you selected were kind of the energy that you overcame. Um, and so that's really what you've conquered in the past life. And in a way, it hints at the blessings you're getting in this lifetime. So you chose Black Moon with dormant and isolation. But the second card <laughs> is actually Lilith showing up in this reading. So I think that's beautiful, where uh, we have the serpent down here. And just to spoil the next card, we have the number 28 with transformation and shedding skins. And so we could already see a lot of this uh, transformative, dark Scorpio energy that you've already overcome. And I think that's where the blessings are coming from and why it might in this lifetime feel so much easier to do um, shadow work and why you might feel so drawn to not only your shadow, but the moon and the occult and uh, the hidden layers of yourself. And the more that you look into that, the more blessings you get and the more really divine light. And um, it's kind of like your guardian angel is specifically guiding you to look more at this part of yourself um, and again that's because you've done that already in a past life and so in this lifetime it feels like second nature and it feels like you unlock a lot of um, additional gifts as you do this and yeah that can be said with everybody but I just think that it's amplified with this pile and then we have um, kind of I wanted to choose a card for uh, an energy, a guide that's bringing forth these blessings to you. And then we have Hathor with unconditional love and celebration, the number 26. And we do see the moon on there as well. So I think this, all of this really makes a lot of sense, <laughs> of course. But, um, and this goes to show that you 
already i think again this is why it feels so familiar is that you've already loved this part of yourself you spent so much time in a past life understanding the shadow that it really doesn't feel like anything <laughs> it's while it might be intense i think you find comfort in this intensity but let's go ahead and see what blessings um this past life is bringing forth to you now <laughs> blessings and I, i'm, I'm kind of hearing it's like blessings I'm like, really it's it just feels like it's been very difficult <laughs> a lot of challenge a lot of turbulence and i think part of it is because you're able to overcome and it's well it's not just overcome but you're able to thrive in these less than ideal conditions of living and so it might have felt as though um, you've you've been pushed to the absolute limit in a lot of ways. We have the tower, and you're like, how how could this possibly be a blessing? It is a blessing if you consider what I'd mentioned in the beginning, where um, you thrive in darkness and you thrive in uncertainty in in this um, in transformation. And so, with the tower being the absolute, I mean, not the only card of transformation, but a very sudden one it's like one that y imagine being that lightning that amount of power and heat that can only come into being with violence with a sudden spark uh, otherwise the lightning cannot exist and i could see that as things that make you more powerful and um yeah, we'll, we'll look at the other cards. We have the Four of Cups, which would be the complete opposite of where you'd want to be, absolute boredom. Um, but at the same time, it's a rest, a pause, a change in energy where you don't have to deal with so much chaos because that could also be incredibly exhausting. And then we have the Nine of Swords um, as a blessing, which is amazing again, but it's just goes to show how much you grow and how much um, strength you find within yourself during those more difficult circumstances. And I think a lot of it, when it comes to the Nine of Swords in this case, I feel like that's coming directly from your shadow, from a past life, um, where it's just maybe been something that's brought your attention to it so that you can tap into the blessings. Again, the blessings are coming from um, these transformations from your study of your own black moon Lilith and through um, kind of potentially dark magic in a past life, but more it feels like just really getting to know your shadow and that work has been done. So this is more of um, kind of rekindling a friendship with that part of yourself. And then we have the temperance card which is, I think, the ultimate win. <laughs> uh, the ultimate blessing is blending these two energies together, blending this tower and the Four of Cups, where I think in this lifetime you'll find a, a couple things. Um, the first is that you might, again, find comfort in this darkness and in turbulence, and again, that's where you draw a lot of your power, but um, this lifetime is suggesting that you don't only have to be there exclusively. Like, um, you could find a nice balance where you can still have this power. It's not like that power is taken away when you reach moments of peace. And I think also that's part of the reason why this Nine of Swords happens. It's it. This Nine of Swords happens, sorry, this one, um, because you create it in a lot of ways like you create this tower you are that lightning as i said and um, a lot of times when you find yourself being bored or um, not just bored but lacking motivation you naturally create um, like i keep saying chaos but turbulence in your own life and i think part of your mastery in this lifetime has to do with creating turbulence with purpose you know not just for the sake of it not just to um make things happen but it's like what can you make happen that aligns with your uh not only highest potential and highest good but also 
um, something that the world needs to be broken down and destroyed and it's really like mastering both sides of yourself as I say but um, look and then we have the two wings right with the tower and temperance black wings and white wings and you could see that both of these angels are in their element you know peace serenity chaos um, and these two are one side of the same coin and whatever it's like wherever the coin lands you can adapt to it and embrace that energy fully and I, I don't know it just feels like uh, like the temperance card where there's one foot in the water and one foot on land and you can be in heaven and hell at the same time and use kind of like the underworld to um, channel and not just channel but create physical reality and I think that's the tower in a way is also a card of creation not <laughs> not the actual tower but I mean when you consider um like the debris and everything that's falling around and what what's being revealed underneath that tower and how could you use that to grow something entirely new it's um a motive motivating energy it forces you to rebuild and i think again that that force that enables you to rebuild is what's pushing you towards your greatest strength and your greatest power is ultimately being able to do both we have the ten of wands underneath the tower ten of swords eight of swords yeah there's a lot of very dense energy and then at the very end we have the sun underneath the temperance card and i think this is your biggest blessing and it might feel like it's taken forever to get to but it's well earned i don't know about all the other piles because i haven't seen it yet but i feel like out of all of most of the people uh, i think this this pile has earned the happy ending that's coming more than most <laughs> uh, we have the ten of wands underneath the tower the eight of swords underneath the four of cups and i think this is important to make note of that these two cards feel the most heavy well no the ten of swords <laughs> and nine of swords are the most heavy but it's like these two cards are the precursor to these two and that's something you'd want to keep in mind um that boredom creates a version of you that wants to make almost bring forth pain towards you and it's like through that pain you find a way of it's i could imagine like the the wings of an angel growing out of scars like so there's that cut and then once the cut heals then that's when the angels evolve and um come out but what's interesting is that a lot of this is uh a lot of this journey that you have is only with you i don't see a lot of other people involved you know um this is more of a especially mental agonizing thought process of like who am i why am i here why am i so angry not always but um at my circumstance or at the world and um i could imagine like a, a seesaw or swing of um, absolute faith and just giving up completely going back and forth and it's interesting that in the middle is where you will most likely not only end up but also find absolute mastery in this world in this lifetime where um, you know faith sounds great but at the same time having doubt is what pushes you to take action and to make things happen on your own instead of waiting for good luck to come to you you know it's meeting the universe halfway and i think um that level of communication that you have within your shadow and yourself is also reflected in the communication and relationship you have with the universe as a whole and the external environment so let's get one more card and we have intuition knowing and this is your biggest gift 
that comes from White Moon Selena. And we'll almost see the White Moon Selena showing up here directly. I mean, I don't think this card is her, but I could see that energy in this card very strongly. And this, this comes after um, what you've already gone through in a past life. And this is, again, an energy that almost follows you, that you're comfortable with. Um, so finding this level of serenity and peace and calm um, when that no longer feels like punishment and it, there's just a very natural evolution to being at peace and embracing peace and spreading it and um, almost seeing the chaos within the peace. I don't know if that makes sense, but where you could find that same level of focus and intention even when things aren't happening around you um i think that's where you'll make the most personal progress you know at a deep level but yeah i'm gonna end the reading there hopefully you enjoyed it please let me know in the comments i think this one was naturally very connected to black moon lilith but if you haven't already check out damselfly as part of the reading where she looks at more of the low vibrational karma i know this doesn't seem like <laughs> high vibrational karma um because i guess when you say it that way high vibe this isn't high vibe energy but this is where you get a lot of the blessings um from what feels like has already happened where um this pain and anguish in a lot of ways but also it's forces it's forced you to look into your shadow to work within and through that that's where you've gotten the most growth and most potential and most blessings so yeah uh i hope to see you in the next reading please consider liking sub sharing subscribing you know the stuff i have to say on youtube <laughs> um but hopefully you enjoyed it and i hope to see you in the next reading take care hi pile two if you chose this card this is going to be your reading on really the blessings from your white moon selena um from a past life this card represents part of the energy coming through from your past life um, but before we get into that um, if you missed the intro this is a collaboration between myself and damselflies and she'll be looking at your black moon lilith so if you haven't already please um, check out her part of the reading it's really going to connect well with this and i want to thank damselflies with for coming up with the idea and just being an awesome friend <laughs> so we have this card which is a uh, crescent waxing fire moon with shoots and impulse and then we have uh balsamic waning fire moon with seeds the number seven and one with compromise um, this is part of the energy that i could say you've conquered and is bringing forth the blessings from this past life um and we also have the number 66 with Orion constellation, global vision, grace begins, brings abundance, honor, and strength. And this pile is, I think, used to defending yourself, especially in a past life. Like you might have quite literally had to deal with a lot of wars um, in a past life, had to deal with defending yourself, defending your beliefs, and being true to who you are and i think that part of you is very natural um most likely i'm imagining actually scorpio but also aries sagittarius leo um those energies but it's interesting is that um, part of the blessings it's bringing in oh we have and even look at this authenticity with the number 15 going up to six with masks I think you've had to do this a lot in the past and i think part of maybe towards the end of one lifetime is that you've put all of those down but you knew how to be different people and there's something going on with the face specifically we the number 21 and acceptance surrender so it's kind of like that face is melting away we'll notice notice the color palette is very different between these oracles and communication an expression of your authentic self um, and allowing that expression eh, expression i'm trying to speak with the communication card what's going on <laughs> um maybe that's part of what's happened in this lifetime like you had to 
reacclimate yourself to uh, maybe also this was an action based uh, more physical energy from a past life so you're used to doing things and not talking about it uh, and maybe that could be said as well in this lifetime but now it feels like you're being called to express this confidence that you have for yourself and I think that's where the blessings come in is that um, it's kind of interesting because it feels like while it's very normal for you to show yourself uh, but talk about yourself is very difficult <laughs> for this pile and I think in a lot of ways um, talking about yourself expressing and communicating ideas is where you feel most vulnerable but it's also where you'll be getting the most blessings we have judgment um, six of pentacles so life purpose has a lot to do with um, giving your inner self your shadow a voice two of swords and this these uh, cards represent oh temperance again your blessings that are brought forth from your past life and so I think seven of swords at the bottom of the deck and we did see the seven earlier with the compromise card so you're used to giving parts of yourself it, it it's like i could imagine you defending the little guy a lot with this pile but again that feels easier than it is to defend yourself when you need to uh, verbally in this <laughs> and again in this lifetime on this planet um, it's it might feel a bit more difficult to stand up for yourself in um, verbal arguments because I, I think in a lot of ways it might feel I want to say beneath you <laughs> where it's just like I don't I just want to throw fists and raise my sword and get physical because I think <laughs> that would end things very quickly and because in today's I mean I guess in general that's not acceptable but like in society today um, that's that's the way we deal with um, arguments and being civil but that's also very difficult for you um, and so part of this is allowing this w inner warrior to come out verbally <laughs> and I think that means not being afraid of I don't want to say hurting others with words like I don't like when people say that. it's like oh I'm just being honest I'm like no you're being an <laughs> a bad person you know that there's a way to be diplomatic and still prove a point but anyway let me show you the cards uh you have judgment and these are your blessings brought forth and i think with this card i had mentioned or did i uh guardian angels being associated with the white moon selena and this feels like a very powerful guardian angel um, that's working with you in this lifetime. You have the Six of Pentacles. So in a lot of ways, the more y vocal you are, the more you give this side of you a voice, the more, I think, financial abundance you'll have. And then that's also clarified with the Judgment card. Um, so we'll look at that a little bit later as well. But you have the Two of Swords kind of feels like a balance between saying what people want to hear and saying the truth and then we have temperance which is exactly where it was in the last uh reading pile one so uh we're kind of noticing that theme right of bringing some of a past life's success and um parts of you that you've conquered and bringing it into this lifetime but also adapting a completely equal and opposite energy into this lifetime where uh it, it feels a bit more passive a bit more blue and green just like these colors are showing but at the same time that doesn't mean to pre pretend things are okay when they aren't 
it doesn't mean to allow people to walk on you and finding that balance is a big part of what you're here to learn in this lifetime but also where you can find the most success and most blessings is um, in being the middle way which is the six of pentacles definitely six associated with heart-centered energy and two of swords with this i mean usually it, it's, it has to do with indecision but here because the swords are not crossed there isn't a person there at all um so that energy is flowing nicely like it's uh unblocked really and we have these two angels showing up temperance and the judgment card so gabriel archangel uh Hmm. I was going to say Raphael, kind of coming through here with healing and, again, communication. Because a lot of times, especially with uh, Archangel Gabriel, it's um, bringing the life purpose of others to light. Um, but also, in a lot of ways, you could consider yourself to be someone who's channeling angelic wisdom to another person and by withholding that information you could potentially be withholding the help that other people need so let's just clarify these cards you have page of cups five of cups under the six of pentacles i'm going to clarify that the hermit underneath the two of swords And the King of Wands underneath Temperance. And I think this King of Wands represents an energy that you're very, very comfortable with. Again, because there's so much fire in a past life. Um, so it's bringing that through. And the Knight of Wands at the bottom. So, and I like thinking of the King of Wands as like, well, of course, the most evolved form of the Wands. But um, because generally we think of... Aries and and uh, fire signs is just chaotic and jumping all over the place. But really, when it's reserved, that energy is uh, focused and concentrated. Much like the emperor is seated. Sometimes I guess <laughs> I, I think it's seated in uh, rider weight, but it's not standing. It's not moving in circles or anything. It's um, more focused in the power that he or she wields and only uses it as needed. And that's the thing is that you have this power. I think your fire in this lifetime has, again, to do with what you say. And um, you've been possibly withholding that for a big part of your life. Um, sacrificing yourself for the comfort of others. And that's taken its toll on you and i think you'll find again more success in um not only speaking on behalf of those who can't speak for themselves but also speaking on behalf of yourself <laughs> of your own uh injustices that you faced and feeling confident the confidence and power of the whole universe and the angelic realm behind you, uh, knowing that like what you have to say, other people need to hear uh, because they're experiencing something very similar in in that sense, like um, an unfair world that could be made fair by sharing stories of injustice, um, even if it's just that awareness that changes the trajectory of. Uh, humanity as a whole what <laughs> uh, sorry I, I'm trying to keep it together well I don't <laughs> yeah um, but I said share like the word you know and it says share at the bottom I think that's self-explanatory <laughs> I, I don't know it's, I still get amazed by that you know but um, building a community by putting yourself out there and then we have uh, turn on. So there's that solar plexus that um, I think is present, especially from a past life. So you don't really have to do any work um, in kind of lighting that part of you up. It's more of um, expressing it 
to others because I think, again, there's a lot of fear back here. Um, but that's where you find your blessings, right? Is um, in allowing that warrior to do what it's great at doing, which is not just creating conflict, but um, sharing fire and warmth and expression and creation. And I think that's really got a lot to do with your life purpose on this planet, but also where you'll find um, just good luck, lots of good luck, lots of blessings by doing that naturally. And you'll get the feedback almost instantly. Um, so watch out for that and watch out for the amount of people that are drawn to you and that you attract into your life. Um, because otherwise, m maybe um, the universe is asking you to put yourself out there a bit more and be more confident. It's not just about how you putting yourself out there or whatever, but it's the confidence behind it. It's like someone needs to hear this. I know it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and end the reading there. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Please like, share, and subscribe. Um, let me know what you thought of the reading. And of course, let me know what um, or how this reading relates to Damselflies part of the reading with the Black Moon Lilith. I'm looking forward to seeing that. But yeah, hope to see you in the next reading. <laughs> Take care. Hi, Pile 3. If you chose this card, this is going to be your reading on... Um, I was going to say messages from White Moon Selena, but really your blessings from a past life. Um, so your good karma, in other words, from a past life. And of course, if you missed the intro, this is a collaboration between myself and Damselflies, who will be looking at Black Moon Lilith and more of the low vibrational um, karma that you've accumulated and how it's affecting you in this lifetime, as well as... Um, hidden secrets about why that might be or why that is a good thing you know um concerning your own growth and evolution and so yeah go ahead and check that out if you haven't already um but while we're here you know you're stuck with me <laughs> for a bit i have this black moon card which is revision dormant air with the number eight and this is energy that you've conquered in a past life and also part of the energy that is giving you the good karma in this lifetime. We have Demeter. And then Sleeper. I mean, a lot of this has to do with letting go and accepting and uh, sacrificing, compromising a little bit lots of fertility, and the color palette is almost exclusively yellow and green. Very earthy, very vibrant, like spring. Um, let's look at the deity that is bringing forth the blessings from your past life into this lifetime is Archangel Sandalphon with anchoring in the number 12. So a lot of this so far, and we'll take a look you know a bit more at these other oracles but actually let's do that right now <laughs> we have trust the fall with the number 19 and perception the dreamer so straight away i mean we're noticing that pattern between the sleeper and dreamer and even trust the fall this very um ethereal energy so i have no doubt that this pile has at least the potential to have very very vivid dreams very vivid dreams <laughs> uh they are very real realities for you and i think um in a lot of that there's that as above so below there's um i think when you daydream as well a big part of your journey on this lifetime is like with archangel sandifon anchoring it into physical reality and i also think that um, there's this part of you that might have felt as though uh, you weren't heard, I think in a past life more so than anything, um, but where there's almost an inability to get to where you want to go or create your own, your own reality. Um, and I think part of the blessing is that it's being done for you, um, but it, it's kind of like, I imagine drawing without actually your pen hitting the paper. Like you're looking at paper and it, an image forms, but there's almost this, it's weird. There's a disconnect um, because you are creating that reality, but 
you don't feel that interaction directly, almost physically. And I do think that that's a blessing in a way that that's a gift that you're able to do that without as much effort as most other people would need to put forth. But let's look at the blessing. <laughs> what blessings are coming in from um, your good karma that you've created? And so a lot of this good karma is comes from letting go, right? It's letting go and having a sharp mind and allowing the mind to create in itself. Uh, I don't remember what it was called. There's an axiom that's like uh, the will... It, I'm going to butcher this. The all is the mind. The will of the... Oh, I messed... I forgot it. Don't even worry about what I was going to say. But that whole idea of uh, life is but a dream and that the mind is creating reality as a projection. And I think that level of mastery... Because, I mean, we'll even see between these three cards a connection of... Um, like for the sleeper card, the brain almost her her head is growing branches of life. Uh, this perception card is communicating potentially past lives or different timelines um, without opening the mouth. Both of them are closed, or their eyes and mouth is closed. But the hair, uh, that mental energy is very wild. We also have with Demeter. There's um, you know, uh, things growing out of her, her hair where it's, um, it's like wheat or something, uh, life, you know, being created from, from the mind. And again, even with this, the air, black moon with the number eight, which is kind of a power source, I think for this pile is uh, the potency of your mind. And that is a blessing, I think, because even Archangel Sandophon has his eyes closed. Isn't that weird? Look at that. If you could look close, I don't know with the lighting, it's terrible, but his eyes are closed or he's looking down and there's something with all of their eyes are closed. Um, and even this card, which I'm just going to put these down, but it looks like, I don't know if it was Van Gogh, whoever made that painting with the uh, starry, starry night. You'll know if you know. If not, I'm sorry. I can't. I can't help you. That's the best description I'm going to give with that. But um, bringing again dreams into reality, almost making feeling the physicality of twilight, of stars, of um, the ether. You know. But let's look at the blessings. So we have the Queen of Wands. We have the Knight of Cups. We have the Sun. And we have the Seven of Cups. And these are blessings brought forth from your past life, from what you've conquered, which, again, has a lot to do with um, trusting the universe, but also trusting your own mind and where it's guiding you and... Um, really the potency of the thoughts that you're putting out, that they are being heard constantly by the universe, and that there is a, a constant communication between yourself and the reality that you're creating. But we have, with the Queen of Wands, I, it just feels like you've, you have a lot of, oh look, if you could look closely, there's arrows coming out of her mind and she's projecting different faces. I forgot which goddess this is, uh, but I know it is a goddess with different heads, um, but incredibly powerful. And surprisingly, I'm being drawn to the head and this object above her and really the objects that are being brought forth from her mind again. I think that's your power source in a lot of ways. I'm also imagining the ability to, with the Knight of Cups, um, I mean, this, I guess, would be more of a shadow aspect, but you could be very good at manipulating people or convincing others, um, even romantically. 
then we do have the sun which <laughs> interestingly enough uh, I think it came out in a different pile but the sun is the face of this person <laughs> which is usually not where you see the sun uh, card more solar plexus energy but it's actually <laughs> the eye is the light shining out. So there's a lot, very, very powerful mental energy again with this pile, and that's where you shine brightest, and I think, um, but it's also funny because in the past life, there's less of an emphasis on being deliberate with the way you're thinking, it's more passive, and studying how the mind works. Now I think that you've done that study and you know how your mind works. And by that, I mean like not only what your thoughts, where they come from and analyzing the thoughts for themselves, but also the result of those thoughts having happened and what unfolds before you as you're thinking. So it's like um, a more advanced practice with how you work at a deep level. But the result of that is kind of the world's really opening up and you're seeing things in a completely new light uh, of potential and it's like as i said with that projection analogy where um that projection can be tweaked so that it's more hd or you could compensate for the color if it's very bright you can dim the lens or whatever there's that level of manipulation that you might have or you might be drawn to try out um within your mind and how the external world really reacts to it very strongly. And I think you'll be surprised if you haven't already noticed that uh, level of kind of telepathy, if you will. And then with the Seven of Cups, let's just look at that. I'm gonna just get another card before I say anything about it, actually. Let's get one more card for the Seven of Cups as a blessing. Let's get another card. Because <laughs> uh, we got that Seven of Pentacles showing up. And Ten of Wands. Let's have these three cards. With the number seven, I, I'm imagining like a lot of strength but knowing yourself through your creation and I think a big part like if you aren't creative in any way um, I mean you probably are but that's how you get to know yourself and understand uh, your deeper desires is through what you manifest physically um, I think with the ten of wands though you might feel almost burdened by the expectation of having to make something of yourself um, but it should feel natural I think especially with all this mental power and energy let's clarify these um, so I mean just like with any of the mind cards if you will that uh, too much of that mental energy unfocused can end up blocking your flow and blocking your potential and so um, if you find yourself getting stuck it's because not only you're overthinking it but um, you're putting a lot of pressure on yourself to perform in a certain way and I think um, that's when you can revert back to your past life where you've conquered already um, being a bit more passive and allowing yourself to dream and stepping back and letting your subconscious do a lot of the work um, because I think there is that natural creative potential within you and it doesn't take any effort um, but if you wanted to be a bit more um, direct in your approach uh, or at least having a good blueprint for what you want to achieve the more details you are with that, the more likely it is to manifest in your reality. We have the Four of Pentacles underneath the Queen of Wands, Queen of Wands. And I think um, in a lot of ways, this suggests that uh, you've become more and more aware of the power that you wield and more um, mindful of the people who try and manipulate your mind 
because I think in a lot of ways they're trying to warp reality through you. Uh, we have the Temperance card underneath the Knight of Cups. This suggests like alchemy and alchemizing um, the, I guess, negative energy of others and using it for your own not not only your own game but also like um, the well-being of the planet as a whole. Um, but aside from that, like. I don't know, I, th I feel like there's a blessing <laughs> that has to do with attracting other people, like romantically. That's something that you're able to do. I think this pile is physically attractive and I do think that it makes it easier for others to listen <laughs> to what you have to say. Um, but what's interesting is also we have the Fool and the Sun card here. And they're very closely associated to each other, not only because the fool has the same um, sun face, sun face, that's funny, um, but the fool is often seen as a ray of sunlight, as a part of the sun, an expression of the sun, and I think that just ties back to how um, your mind is or your reality is an expression of your mind and the experiences that you draw into your life are a creation that you make and I think the more control you have over that um, oh, okay. oh look at this I said control and the first thing that came out was relax non-action But I do think that's how you control the mind, you know, where it's not just wandering aimlessly, that um, when it's blank, then the canvas, your canvas is free to create anything. Um, if you have, like I said, um, a, a piece of art and you're trying to draw like a painting or whatever, but it's already filled with an image, what are you supposed to make? <laughs> it's already cluttered with with stuff that's not even yours and so I think that these cards not action relax the allowing um, it draws you back into uh, a past life where you've again already conquered if you will um, and gained that blessing uh, from the universe to understand your place in reality because I do think um, especially in today's world it's almost expected that we absorb constant, like a constant stream of media. And like, I went, I went to the gas station today and I was pumping the gas and then there's like a, a screen that just pops up and there's someone talking at me <laughs> with like some news or I'm like, shut up, what are you doing? What are you, all, all this noise for what? I go to the gym and at the gym there's TVs and, um, like uh, movies playing, like just work, just work out, please. <laughs> you, you can't imagine um, just rows of people taking a machine, holding weights, and they're just like watching TV. I'm like do that, do that at home. Stop it. Sorry, I'm I'm venting a little bit because that irritates me. You know, um, I forgot what I was gonna say. Oh no. Well, that's the opposite of this. Of your you know, perception, dream, sleeper, that's your creative power. And that creative power is being robbed from you, literally robbed from you by constantly consuming, um, you know, the flashing lights and the colors and um, what you would have daydreamed about would change if you didn't, so, so it's like imagining a superhero movie or whatever, you're pretending you're Thor and Iron Man and stuff like that. Um, but that's really a daydream based off of someone else's reality, someone else's creation, as opposed to maybe creating your own story with your own characters, uh, which would be kind of digging deeper into yourself so that if you felt you've been having trouble creating something, it's because maybe you've been absorbing too much um, of someone else's creation, if that makes sense. And we do have reciprocate. <laughs> We have a dragon. Hey. 
Um, and I think this reciprocation is to yourself and to the planet as a whole, where it's going back to maybe your past lives and, and um, I don't know, it feels more like you, uh, form, forming a relationship with yourself, with um, different levels of who you are and allowing those levels to express itself. And I think that's where you get the most blessings, um, especially if you're logging dreams and doing something with those dreams that you're writing down or thinking about or experiencing. Um, they want to take form in this reality. And I think you'll find a lot of success if you allow that to happen. So yeah, I'm going to end the reading there. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, please like, share, subscribe. Let me know what you thought of the reading. And I also want to know how it relates to Damselfly's part of the reading where she looks at uh, the Black Moon Lilith and how this low vibrational energy might be seeping into this reality, but also what you can do to make it work for you. So yeah, I hope to see you in the next reading. <laughs> Take care. So let's talk about these bracelets. <laughs> Uh, I was sent these by Otter Spirit, and I wanted to give again a shout out to Otter Spirit for sending me these bracelets and for sponsoring this video. I chose the Bloodstone, the Green Jade, and Red Jasper. The Red Jasper I really wanted for strength, being a Capricorn rising, um, and then the Green Jade. I just like green, <laughs> and the color is so vibrant and it really does help with my heart chakra. Um, the website was easy to navigate. You can search by zodiac sign, you can search by intention. It's filled with information, and I really love that about the website. Um, but most importantly, like the quality is just top notch. It really feels great on the wrist. Um, there's a certain weight to it. You know, I've had a few other gemstone bracelets that kind of feel cheap, especially that band in the middle. So, I mean, it, it stands out. The packaging is gorgeous. They, you know, donate a dollar for from each bracelet to help support otters, which is really cool. And they're a small kind of family owned brand. So uh, I feel good with making each purchase. So I highly recommend that you give them a try. Again, if you're in the market for gemstone, jewelry, bracelets, things like that. I do have the code BLACKDRAGON20, or you can use the link in the description to get 20% off your purchase. Thank you again for supporting the channel, and I hope to see you in the next reading.